question from Scott Edwards. I'm intrigued by the premise of HustleCon that a non-technical person can found a startup. Can you speak a bit about how one would do that for a product that is not just informational? So thank you, Scott, for that question. Uh, this is a theme that touches me very deeply in terms of my passion. So I'm not sure if you were here at the beginning of this session, but I mentioned that I'm, I'm non-technical in background. So I have a degree in political science, and then I did a master's degree in sociology. So very social science driven kind of guy, not engineering, not engineering focused or math focused. But uh, Beat the GMAT, my previous startup, startup was quite technical. We uh, we had a lot of informational stuff on there, but there was a lot of technology that we had developed to to build out our community platform, to build out a new, a new social media platform. So uh, we did have more engineers than anyone else on our team. So there's a couple ways that you can go about um, starting a tech startup. And I know this is not quite your question, but I, I'm assuming that you're you're mentioning a tech startup, or a tech or a software product, even when you're non-technical. Um, <clears throat> so, I highly encourage you to check out the recordings for HustleCon. They're going to be live on Udemy.com in a couple of weeks. We actually had a number of folks talk about building software as a non-technical founder. Um, some areas of advice that I would encourage you to think about. Uh, there is a lot that you can do even as a non-technical person to build out a product. So even before you put hands to code or hands to your keyboard to develop code, there's a lot of market validation you should be doing up front. So you should be talking to clients, prospective customers, talking about some of the concepts that you are trying to build and see whether people want it. So mistake 101 for a lot of entrepreneurs is not doing enough customer validation prior to developing their product. Uh, usually, it's what they do is is inverse, which is they build a product and then try to validate it. And I think that's completely the wrong order. So uh, there's a lot you can do to understand your customers now, and that doesn't require any coding. Uh, the second thing too is let's say that you you validated your product idea and you are ready to start showing some prototypes. Even then, I'd say that you're not necessarily ready to code. There are some things that you can be doing to do further validation, like uh, using prototyping tools such as Balsamic, uh, B-A-L-S-A-M-I-Q, I believe is what the software is called, or even using PowerPoint. And you can create um, very rough mock-ups of what the product will look like. You, you, can, you can sort of mimic the experience even with slides and start share, sharing those with prospective customers to see whether you're going down the right, right track with your software. That kind of upfront usability is uh, mind-bogglingly important in helping to guide your software development. So think about that kind of prototyping. Um, I'll tell you a really quick story of what we did uh, with uh, some of our uh, previous businesses, where we uh, were we sold actually hundreds of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of business even before we started developing by paying a designer a couple grand to come up with some screenshots, some mock screenshots that we were able to share and, and show to prospective clients. And um, based on those pictures alone, we were able to close some sales. So there are some sales and revenue generating opportunities in just uh, working on design, working on uh, some compelling mock-ups. And, uh, and that's a really great way to, to uh, start as a, as a non-technical person. Now, when it comes to developing, um, there's a few ways that you can go about this. Uh, one is you can find someone who is technical to partner with you. So maybe there is a technical co-founder aspect. I don't want you to necessarily get too hung up on that if you can't find a technical co-founder. Um, in fact, it becomes an excuse that I hear a lot in Silicon Valley. is like, oh, I have this great idea, but the only thing stopping me is not having a technical co-founder. Well, um, a technical co-founder can help a lot, and I did have a technical business partner that helped us immensely in the course of Beat the GMAT. But there are some things that you can do even to um, to develop a product w without that. You can build a minimal minimum viable product uh, just using some of the prototypes that you develop through Balsamic, or hiring a designer to work out the the front end workflows, and then developing really good 
requirements documentation which you can share with outsourced developers using sites like Odesk or Elance. I've had some great success working with, with, uh, with contractors that I found on Odesk.com and uh, very inexpensively we have been able to develop some, some world, cl world class products. So um, one area that, of skill development that I encourage you to think about is learning how to, develop, uh, how to create a requirements document which you can then communicate and share and collaborate upon with developers that you can hire externally. So uh, if you can nail the experience of writing good requirement stocks, that will take you a very far way and perhaps you'll find that you don't even need uh, uh, technical people to, to uh, pursue your business.